okay? <laughs> so I, I kind of started this quite last minute. So uh, I was thinking what to talk about. Then three years already, so many different topics. I was like, I think tackle every single topic already. I don't know what to talk about now. Like, how now brown cow? So I ding, 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 ding. And then don't know, somehow I managed to think of eight ideas. I was like, hmm, how ah? So I decided to merge all my eight ideas into one single topic. And then that's why it's, it became Bohemian recipe. Briyani recipe, yes. Okay, so uh, my name is Ishu. Uh, this is my Twitter handler. Uh, this is a preview of what I usually tweet about. So if you ever throw out, I love you and don't get I love you in return, you can say React is great, but there's something I just love about Vue. Okay. So uh, I started thinking about code reviews because uh, for work, that's what I do every single day. Uh, actually, all of us do this every single day at work, la, doing code review. And then, uh, this is a CSS uh, file code review. So, do you realize that actually CSS is very hard to code review for? Like, every time I look at it, I'm like, what do you change? Actually, <laughs> mm, there's a padding change. There's a, I don't know. Then, some of the worst thing is, right, if you never change any class, your HTML file, or let's say your React file, it won't be part of your pull request. So the change file is this, but then you need to go back, let's say to master, and then you go and look at how the current HTML file look like. So it's like, ah, shit, why is this so tough? So every time I just say, okay, can, can, approve, approve, approve. <laughs> so as opposed to iOS, uh, if we look at the iOS code, right, it's a little bit easier to see. Uh. So um, they're all very meshed up together. Your content, let's say the label, and then the style, they're all in one single line. And most of the time, uh, styling in iOS is always referenced to other components. So this component is three pixels below the other component. So when you look at the code, you aga can think in your head, ah, yeah, 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 this is, I think you're right. Uh. The label is correct place. Uh. So, I don't know why, but code review for CSS is always so hard. And then, is it because reading or skimming through CSS is very hard? So at the end, most of the time, for my code review, I just point out like those very linting kind of problem. Like, uh, actually, if you write padding top, padding bottom, padding right, why not you just write padding da, 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 and zero? It was better, right? So this kind of thing, actually, why, why my company pay me money to do this kind of thing? A bit more now. Like, myself just use a linter. La. So, at the end of the day, I'm either a linter or I just press OK. <laughs> a bit useless. So, uh, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, OK, how to solve this problem? Maybe one of it is that if you have a design system, then you don't, need this, you don't have this problem anymore. Because if you have a full suite design system, right, most of the time, you're not supposed to change the CSS code anymore. So let's say if your, if your pull request shows me that you change from alert primary to alert secondary, then in my head it's like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I think what you mean is this alert is not as important, ah. then I'll approve. Then sometimes maybe you can write class that says you want to change from align top to align bottom, because I don't need to see a CSS class, all I need to see is your HTML, I saw it change, I understand what you mean. Hmm, okay, can. So, hmm. Uh, then I went to <laughs> look through all the old talk about CSS and then I found this uh, very interesting talk by Sheldon where he talked about atomic CSS. So um, the first one on top, the alert, alert primary, right? They will be more like a semantic type of CSS and then the align top, maybe contact agnostic, maybe atomic. So uh, if you want to go all the way, all the way, to atomic. This is how your HTML will look like. And then, sure, it's cool, but it's a bit hard to read. So I'm back with the problem of code review is so hard to read. So let's say MW5, I, I don't know immediately what I mean. I need to go to the documentation and see again. And then your HTML code also super long. Like, oh, it's quite tough once again. And then, uh, okay, so if you have never heard about atomic CSS, this is how it looks like. This is a quite uh, famous, uh, not famous, but just more stars uh, library that use that is uh, that, that is based on atomic CSS. You can see uh, Let's say if you want a display block, so you just put your class as DB, 
inline block DIB. So uh, when you want to build something, for example like that, so you will just power on. Uh, but then um, the fun thing is that you think about it, your CSS file is limited in size. It will never grow based on your project because how many padding, it's like you look at your own CSS file now, how many padding top 20 do you write? You probably not write about, about a thousand times already. So with this atomic CSS, you only write one time and that class is called PT2. Yeah. So your CSS file is always, it's a limitation in size, uh, which is good, I guess. So, but then I thought about it, like not all of us, we don't write HTML files anymore. It's very seldom. We actually work with uh, a framework and this is React. Lah. So inside React, we really know that components are meant to be reusable. At the same time, they're also meant to be semantic. Like my, my class is called box. Lah. So since my component is called box really, right, why do I still need a class name called box? You know, I don't need to declare my, my intention two times. One time inside my, uh, my DOM, and then one more time inside my CSS. So, huh, maybe we don't, be, we don't need BEM if we are using framework. We can just use scope CSS. And then, ta. So you see, if you use style component, there is no class at all. And it's a bit closer to the iOS code, like your style and your component together. And then when you look at the render, you can look up and you look down, you up, look up and you look down and you know, mm, okay, okay, this is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so once we compile, a lot of our CSS uh, file looks like this. Yeah. Mm. If you look at it, uh, you don't really know what class it is uh, because you already, because you try to scope your CSS, there's a generated class name for it. So when you look at your uh, developer tool, you also don't know where it comes from. So why not <laughs> just use Atomic CSS? Okay, so it comes to, uh, oh, wait, wait, demo. <laughs> okay, so over here, I'm using this library. Uh, oh, shit, too big, too big. Okay, so inside my app.js, I'm loading two separate box. One is called box, one is called box two. Just these two box. And then if you look at box, this is my CSS for box. Uh, this is my class. Uh. So I put in padding 32, background color tomato. Box 2 is also 32. The background color is olive. So the fun part is, look at how my CSS look like. Okay, so this, the two boxes just now. Ah, where's my... F2. <laughs> okay, so my box one now has two class. One class is the background color. Oh, zoom in, zoom in. And then one class is 32. The other one, we use the 32 class. So it's atomic, but I didn't write it atomically, but the generated file is atomic. Since it's already like that. Then might as well, let's go all the way. Keep the file small. Don't write border radius zero 1,000 times. Just write it one time. So although during development, everything is still very cool, but then my generated file, uh, where is it? Oh, it's also very small. So at the end of the day, actually what I wanted to say is, my talk is about the case for generated atomic CSS. Yay. Thank you. <laughs>